one, two, three. Hey guys, it's Mouse. So we just completed a mock bug out, myself and Whiskey. Um, what we did is we wanted to find out exactly how much time we're probably looking at if we did an actual bug out. And we wanted to try to learn some of the you know, things we would do right and things we would do wrong. So we're gonna try and do more than just one. We're gonna start doing a few uh, mock bug outs from different locations of different members' houses, so on and so forth. Um, so what we did is we moved at night just like we would in an actual situation and we tried to figure out how much time. Now I originally estimated that bugging out from my start point to our end point would take roughly two and a half days. Um, and I've been in the military and I've done a lot of walking so I'm usually pretty good at estimating time. That being said, I way overestimated that. Um, we could easily make it to our final destination in one day, very easily. Um, so I wanted to share some of the things that we learned with you guys. Um, one of the first things I'm going to talk about is the pack and what we had in the pack. Now the pack that I carried is the one that you see here. And this is a black, I'm not going to move it because I got a cat on it right here, a little kitten sleeping, but it's a black hawk pack and all it is is a good little three day pack. And uh, it's not an Alice pack and that's one of the things I feel like I did wrong. If I could do it again, which we are going to do it again, next time I'm actually going to take a decent pack that actually has a rigid frame and I can tighten up the straps because these wouldn't tighten up enough. Uh, was it good enough? Yes. Was I not going to survive from it? No. But that being said, I would rather have the Alice pack. Um, now in our packs, we carried basically what you would need for a scout because that's all bugging out is. You're not looking to set up camp, you're not looking to stay for days, you're not looking to try and make your own shelters, so on and so forth. You're looking to, to move and just constantly pretty much move and just set up shelter for a minimum amount of time. Now, that being said, you can find shelter along the way and save yourself some time. So what we had in our packs is we had water, which was just the water that we needed to travel. In Georgia, you trip and fall over water, so water filtration is a lot lighter to carry. So something like a Berkey Go or a Life Straw, something like that, it's a lot easier to carry rather than carrying five, ten gallons of water. That doesn't make any sense to do that. So we carried just whatever water we needed until the next point that we refilled. Now I carried two canteens and even that I felt was a little too much and I drank a lot of water. Um, we carried food, but the food was food that we did not need heat to eat so it wasn't something that had to be cooked it was stuff like oatmeal and energy bars so on and so forth basically because if you're on the move you don't want to have to stop and light a, a uh, fuel stove or a sterno can or any of that type of stuff of even alcohol stove none of that you don't want to have to deal with any of that you want to be able to preferably eat while moving um, so all of the food that we carried in our three-day bags our bug out bags was food that we did not have to have heat to in order to prepare. Um, we carried rain gear which came in handy because a huge storm started brewing while we were out there and it just has ended. Um, also the rain gear was the military style poncho so if we absolutely had to uh, conceal our position we could lay up under these ponchos and kind of blend in better in the more of the foliage areas of the tree cover top areas. Um, we carried extra socks and we carried foot powder. That's one of the most important things you can carry in a bug out bag. Take extra socks, and anybody that's been in the military knows this. Take extra socks, take extra foot powder. The foot powder, a little goes a long way. If you put too much foot powder in your socks, it clumps up and it has the opposite effect. It'll, it hurts your feet really bad. So just, just put enough that you got a light coating and it helps keep your feet dry. Stop often and change your socks. Now, let's say you have six pair of socks once you get to the sixth one you can go back to the first one don't just you know don't go through them and then think you gotta wear that six pair for the next three days it's not razors just once you get through to the last one you should be able to switch to the next one uh, we carried headlamps now this is a noise and light discipline thing you don't want to walk with your headlamps on why because it attracts attention 
but there are situations where you're going to have to turn your headlamp on so you don't trip and injure yourself because injuring yourself in an actual bug out situation would be detrimental to your health. Um, we had a map and compass. Now we know our routes really well, but we wanted to just carry on just in case we decided on a secondary tertiary route um, if something was blocking our route, so on and so forth. If you even if you know your routes and you know your secondary route like the back of your hand, still carry a map and compass because you never know when you might need to take that fourth, fifth, sixth route. You never know what will happen. Uh, we carried communications. We carried two forms of communications. Always carry two forms. Um, our first form was two-way radios and our second form was cell phones. And then first aid. We carried things like moleskin, Benadryl for allergies and so on and so forth. Um, light pain relievers like Tylenol so that you know if you get a muscle ache or something like that while you're walking you don't want it to just totally ruin you. Um, on our person we carried uh, the first thing obviously is going to be our clothes. We carried long sleeve clothing because even though yes we're moving at night and yes it's summertime when you're moving through heavy foliage and you know real tree covered top areas dense brush you don't want those uh, you don't want poison ivy to touch you you don't want briars to grab you and root and scratch you and all that so wear long sleeve even in the summer and as far as that goes your bug out gear if you had to just pick one type of clothing it would be winter clothing because let's say you get to where you're going you can cut your winter clothing down to make it summer clothing but you can't do that to summer clothing um, it was dark colored clothing because we were trying to avoid vehicles in an actual bug out situation you're not going to be bug you're not going to be avoiding vehicles because if you're not in a vehicle it's most likely because no vehicles work so this was a worst case scenario bug out um, so wear dark colored clothing because if you're moving at night it's easier to blend in whereas if you wore a shirt like I'm wearing right now you're going to stand out um, good footwear your boots and your pack is probably the two most important things you can carry while bugging out other than your personal protection. Um, good boots. I, even, even with the good boots that I had and doing all the walking in the military that I did, my feet still kind of hurt at the end of it, but it comes from standing on my, at my job, I stand on my feet for 12 hours a day, and it's just, it's wore my feet out. Um, so even doing the stops and changing the socks and things like that, your feet's probably still going to be sore. Uh, we had bug spray like DEET and so on and so forth so we didn't get eat up by bugs. Uh, we had shimagas are around our necks. You normally see me wearing one in a lot of these stop videos. It's just keep sweat out of our eyes to keep you know the dust out of our face and so on and so forth to conceal our identity if we absolutely had to. Uh, but those things are, I, I carry one of those always, first aid, so on and so forth. Um, we carried pepper spray and the pepper spray we carried basically for dogs. Um, we carried that because we didn't want to have to put someone's dog down for messing with us, but we didn't want to get bit either. Um, and just for you know self-defense, a less than lethal type option. Carried a sidearm. We did not carry long guns just because if someone did see us, it would look really suspicious to guys moving at night with military style packs and rifles. Uh, but we did carry sidearms just for protection. Um, on our person we also carried gloves. The gloves were used so if you're moving in like the high foliage area, the brush top areas, especially at night and you're moving stuff out of your way, you should really be wearing gloves because you never know if that's a briar or poison ivy or whatever that you're moving out of your way because it's night time. You don't know what you're touching. So, uh, you know, wear, wear a decent style glove so that you're not ruining your hands. Um, one of the things we underestimated while doing this was the amount of dogs that there were, amount of pets that people have. A lot of, a lot, a lot of dogs barked at us. A lot of dogs gave away our position. That being said, not very many people stepped out and checked to see why their dog was going berserk. One person stepped out on their porch and when they didn't see us because we were standing still, they started telling their dog to shut up and they went back inside and spent the next 10 minutes telling the dog to be quiet even though the dog was trying to do what the dog does, which was alert them that, hey, something's out here. Um, while we were moving, we took Okoka considerations into effect, and we'll do a video on Okoka, 
But basically, El Coca is just make sure that wherever you're deciding to stop, that you can actually defend yourself from that position and that you're somewhat concealed and it's key terrain and that you're limiting your avenues of approach. So I'm not going to stop in the middle of an open field to change my socks and stuff because I'm vulnerable there. Make sure any stop that you make, you're somewhat concealed and protected so that if you did end up having a fight from that position, you have better odds to defend that position. And we'll go more over El Coca in, in the future. Um, another thing that I underestimated was the amount of street lamps. I live in a pretty rural area. I don't live in a city. Um, even though we did go through some neighborhoods, there was a lot of street lamps. And street lamps would give away your position really easy at night because you're moving at night. Um, the street lamps, the further away from them you are, you got to realize the longer the shadow you, you have is, is casting. So the human eye picks up on movement really easily. So you got to understand the further away from that street lamp you are, the longer that shadow, the more movement that's going on behind you. So, you know, keep that in mind. It's easier said than done to say just avoid them. That's not at all possible all the time. So, you know, sometimes you just got to move quickly through the area and try to stay low. If somebody steps out, try to stay low, try to stay unavoided, but street lamps will give you away. Um, the pace that we took was a pretty fast pace, um, but it, it was necessary and we were we were doing good it wasn't killing us to do that pace now that being said you don't have to go a hard pace while bugging out you're not, you don't have to jog your bug out uh, you don't have to go a hard pace or a fast pace but you do need to go a consistent pace slow is smooth smooth is fast even if you're going slow and you're barely even trotting if you're barely even moving you're still making distance so as the more you move the better you are slow is smooth smooth is fast so just Plan your stops accordingly. Don't keep pushing even though your feet are sore and sweaty and so on and so forth. Stop to do the proper stops. But that being said, you don't, you know, try to keep moving as much as possible. Areas to avoid um, that we could see, big open areas, try to stay away from those. Any area that you can be seen from a long way away but you can't see that long. Uh, neighborhoods, I would try to actually avoid. Um, any any of the cities I would stay away from. If you live in a city, try to get out before something happens. If you can't, wait a little bit and then bug out. Um, areas to avoid though, I mean mostly it's just high population areas like neighborhoods, so on and so forth. And I, I guess with the dogs it would be areas with the dogs. Um, what's that last one? Say, I'm trying to see. But um, other than that, guys, uh, we we felt we did pretty good. We made really good timing. Um, the communications that we had, we had two types of communications, the two-way and the cell phones. The two-ways actually crashed when we were out there. One of them stopped working for some reason, and we ended up reverting to cell phones for our bug-out vehicle, the vehicle, that, our extraction vehicle. But um, all in all, I would say the biggest lesson that I learned was the feet, the feet are, you know, once you hurt your feet or your feet, if your feet are already hurt, you're going to be hurting. Uh, we've made really good time, a lot better time than I thought we would. So um, next video we're going to go, we're going to start getting into more of the tactical things and the tactical um, mindset. And that's going to be a lot of the next videos. So we'll be back to you as soon as we can with another video. Thanks for watching, guys.